being spared in such a terrible and a fatal accident, you know that there can only be greater things waiting for you. This should give you an idea for who I'm talking to today. I talk to football legend Peter Glovo. We talk about Coventry FC. We talk about the accident that nearly took his life. You don't want to miss this one. Peter Nlovu, the flying elephant, Zimbabwe's greatest football export and arguably one of Africa's football legends. The former English Premier League football player and now assistant manager of the Zimbabwe national football team started his career at a very young age in the streets of Bakokoba and later played alongside his older brothers Madinda and Adam at Bulawayo's Highlanders Football Club. At the age of 16, he was signed by John Sillard for the English Premier League side, Coventry, making him one of the youngest players in the league. He later moved to Birmingham City, Huddersfield Town and Sheffield United. After all was said and done, he had made over 400 electrifying appearances for club and country. And for that, he was given the name Captain Fantastic. Peter finished his illustrious career in the South Africa Premier Soccer League, making 80 appearances for the Mamelodi Sundowns and scoring 20 goals. Today, Makosi chats with a living legend. Okay, so out of the Nlovo family, um, there are three good football players. Um, is it like you people have the passion for the game, your dad was a footballer? How was football introduced to the Nlovo family? I think we all footballing um, uh, siblings uh, right from the first born. Our first born, his name is Martin, he's late, uh, but uh, now people took from Matinda because Matinda is one who put us on the, the family on the map. Right. Right. So the only thing that my father used to ask when we were young, he would come and say, hey Peter, how did Highlanders play? Oh, they won 2-0. Oh, okay. Even if you tell him the other side, oh, they lost 5-0. Oh, okay. So it, it wasn't sort of like bothered. Well, I wanted to know the, the score line. Right. But uh, I think the important one is when Matinda put us on the map, he, that's when he started. And then uh, obvious Adam came in and uh, Prabhu bettered uh, you know, the, the standard of, of, uh, of our quality within the family. Hence, you know, I spend a lot of time outside, outside the country. So with you, Madinda and Adam all playing at the same time, was there like some sibling rivalry? Like, was, were you competitive amongst yourselves? No, we didn't do that. I think we, we, we just went and played. And uh, of course, at one stage, we would uh, help each other. I remember one time when I was starting, um, Adam would go to the coach and say, he's scared, he's scared. Then I'll, I'll be saying to him, I don't know what he's talking about because I'm only playing football here. I'm not, I'm not scared because I was playing with a big giant. Mm -hmm. But um, there, were, there was none of that. In, in fact, what uh, came up was us helping one another, you know, as a family, helping each other. Also, um, uh, with the team, we collaborated well with the teams because we were team players, not individuals. Our individual brilliance came when it's, it was needed. So you were 15 or 16, you ended up in England. How did that happen? Uh, there's a few things that happened. There was a tournament that we went to Aberdeen as uh, under 16s, but where I was about 15 that time. So I think um, the year after that, Coventry came to, to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Now when they came to Zimbabwe, we played against them in, for the national team that time. Mm -hmm. And then we played them again Oh, I think it was at Highlanders and uh, immediately after that they said they wanted me so that's how I came to go to England but before that there were offers that had come from the United States right. when we talk about United States and I had uh, advice from uh, people that knew what the world meant so they said to me America you're going to study that's fine but uh, how about your career football I said no 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 I would like to collaborate both, but first is my studies right. for my tomorrow. But lucky enough, uh, Coventry came within that time, so I had to to go to Coventry. But when I got to Coventry, it wasn't all about football for me. I think it was uh, the knowledge of what's go going around the world, 
So I kept going to school to know how to run a business. In England? Like in England, yes. Okay. After my football, I would go to school and I would have, um, you know, I focus on a lot of things and I will go to school for them. So I'm pretty much equipped with the day-to-day -day living and life. You're one of the first players from Zimbabwe, maybe from Africa, to play in, in England, English Premiership, right? Yes. How was that for you? It was, it's, yeah, it became reality, but uh, when you watch football on TV, you think, oh, that's a big league. But you don't have that intention that, oh, oh yeah, you can dream, but you're not saying to yourself, I'm going to play there. When it comes, then you think, oh, am I that good to play in that league? Then you, you start taking it serious. Kevin so. Boateng just started this, this um, you know, he's a racial activist for okay. football players. Yes. You went like years ago, like maybe decades ago. Yes. Was racism just as bad or was it worse than it is today in football? Uh, well, it was, it's pretty much the same like now. But a uh, long time, I think uh, it was just, the, the, you, you find a lot of that coming from the fans, you know. But uh, through the players, they help you settle well, they help you get down to business. And of course, they, 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 they sometimes when you joke about things like that, but uh, uh, if you are from Africa and you go into a foreign land, you go there and do your job properly. People only say you are doing a proper job. What goes round, around you, uh, there are systems to cover that. So yes, we might talk about race. race. We don't need that in any way, any, any sport, any, any country. Any, it's, it's not proper for, for people to, to discriminate. You recently lost your brother. How has that changed your vision? How has that changed your vision for football? for yourself and for Zimbabwe? Uh, I think there's uh, one thing I have to say about uh, that. Um, it, is a, it was a telling time, you know, for me, personal, my family, and of course, uh, the people. But the support we got from everywhere, every corner of the world was immense. And uh, we realized that we're not alone as a family. We were with the world and I'd like to thank everyone you know that you know was with us at that time uh, but uh, life goes on as we and i understand i'm sure we all understand my family understands it was an accident and uh, um, we can only look for way forward way forward is um, uh, is the legacy that is left that we have to carry on it's what is uh, he, he was planning to do that we have to now run for him uh, because where he is, I'm sure, he is with the Lord. Uh, he was a church-going person and um, we will carry on his works and we promise that uh, with the support of the people, because we can't do it alone as a family. Yeah. And um, it was uh, touching to, you know, to, to have support from the president of, of, of Zimbabwe. Um, and uh, the other people that are involved in the sporting discipline. We, we, we can't thank everyone, uh, everyone but uh, you know they were with us during that time. It was a very sad time for me personally because it, it happened in front of me. And um, I, I'm, I'll try and be strong, I'm trying to be strong about it and uh, only people around me and people with me, they can make it possible for me to have a, to carry on with my life and do what I do best. I'm glad I'm, I'm, I'm back walking, it's all in the, hand of, in the hands of the Lord. Oh, exactly. Yes, uh, God is great. Um, uh, I think there, there's a purpose for me uh, that I have to realize and it's becoming reality and possible through my, uh, my church because I've chosen to walk with God and uh, that's the way I'm going to take my life. Do you feel when you go through such a tragedy you get, you ask more questions and you get closer to God? Yes, well, without, it's, it's only possible, everything is possible with God. So when that happens, like I say, I'm, 
I was spared and uh, I have to realize my purpose and I'm still going to realize my purpose why I was spared. Uh, I think um, personally I, I realized that uh, when I was in the wild and when you look at things like uh, when I was a football player, I probably reached my, my heights of uh, greatness in terms of being in the world. But I think uh, being spared in such a terrible and a fatal accident, um, you know that there's, there can only be greater things waiting for you. And uh, with God, with the, the Word, I think uh, it's going to be very possible to realize. And there's something greater beyond my football career as a player and now as a coach that is, is it's in store for me in the kingdom of God. Can you tell me one of your best goals, like ever since you started playing, your best goal ever, the one that made you feel like, yeah, I'm the man? You caught me off guard there. I think um, <laughs> um, I always say in terms of br uh, brilliance, you know, uh, it's a goal against South Africa. Right. Yes. When um, South Africa, they were coming back into the fold they, after the, their, their ban. So it was all the hype about how South Africa play their shoe shine football and whatever. But I think uh, I would regard that one as one of my best goals. Would you say that was also your defining moment or your defining moment is totally different? I think it's totally different okay. uh, because I, I always tend to differ when people ask me about the defining moments. Okay. I think Tell me about my, your defining moment. I think it's a uh, one. I take it in a, in a career, you know, set up that uh, who I am now was because of that moment when actually Coventry realized that I was good enough to play in the EPL. The, I think those were the defining moments. Yes, uh, you can be a good player, but there's one moment that tells you that you have to be take it serious now right. you have to take your job serious right. because now it's going to be different it's going to be very professional mm -hmm. and it will need all your time now everybody has a mentor everybody has somebody they look up to like i look up to oprah um who did you what who did you look up to in football that made you love the sport football um again you you, you have players like John Barnes. Right. I think when I was growing up, I used to watch Liverpool. I'm still a Liverpool supporter now. So it's funny that I, I used to look up, uh, up, to, up to him, uh, the way I used to play. It was so inspiration for, for Liverpool and also f uh, to the world, for the world. What did you so think of Pele? Pele was, we're talking of great greats, you know, those are, you know, grandfathers of football. The ancestors <laughs> um, of football. Ancestors <laughs> of football, people like him, Crive. You know, you got uh, Maradona. Right. You know, those are the people, ancestors of football. We taken from them, but of course, when you're talking about uh, who was inspiration to me personally, was John Barnes. I went to Lagos a month ago, and I had the opportunity to talk to Stephen Keshi. Um, I want to know from your point of view how important it is for an African to coach an African team. Because you find that when you go to uh, Africa Cup of Nations, yes. most of the coaches are European. Uh, uh, first of all, is, is the culture. Right. One, mm -hmm. he knew the culture. You always have to know the African culture. It's fine, uh, we don't want to disregard, you know, uh, coaches from abroad. Right. But it's nice also to be represented by your, our own coaches, own uh, uh, what they bring, the people from outside, they bring so much knowledge to our football. Mm -hmm. And we must uh, agree to that. Right. So therefore, the only thing that uh, has to come with that is when we, ha we hire a foreign coach, you must have the setup of the assistants being from that country, mm -hmm. from you know Africa, so that they can also share, they can help him know the setup of the African culture okay. in terms of football. So one, uh, coming to Steve Keshi, it's, it's, it, it was good to mm -hmm. see him lift the cup. One, he, won, he was under so much pressure. But what pressure? We don't know. People instill pressure onto someone without any prejudice. Of course. But uh, now he proved them wrong by lifting the cup. One, 
It's his confidence that took him there. Right. It's his integrity, knowing his job, mm -hmm. whatever was said outside. Because if, if it was someone, he could have walked after two games. That's true. But he's, he's saying to himself, I'm going to do it and I've got a plan. My plan is to win. That's how I'm going to present myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure uh, that's what uh, put him through, got him through the, all the critics. And I, I respect that. He's uh, my personal hero. Uh -huh. we, we, we used to speak when during our, during our playing uh, you know, uh, days. Mm -hmm. He's a great guy, as you, you said. And uh, uh, you can't keep a good man down. That's what I can Never, say. Never, ever. Mm -hmm. What is ZIFA facing? What do you think the, the, board, the football board needs to do to motivate the players? Generally, it's corporate world. The problem is we only support football. Right. When we are nearly going to the World Cups, okay. things like that, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I think we should have a base of things mm -hmm. um, whereby we look from the grassroots right. and then we can build. Like the team we have now for Zim, that's for the future. They are all under 25, I think, right. if you look at that. So there's a platform of building and getting these boys together for the next year or two. Right then you can see results. But I understand people want the results now, but it's not possible. It should be something that you have to build on. What do you think of African football at large? How are we playing? Very well. That's number one. Right. Secondly, if you see the English Premier Leagues or the European Leagues, wherever, who do they have the African players? That of tells course. you a story about how the quality of uh, players we have mm -hmm. um, so it's it's it's, it's good it's uh, we have players it's only what we need is an uh, a professional setup for our clubs i don't know obviously we we tend to struggle with that why we struggle i think if you look at the the investment that is put into football right that's all it means if uh, people are ready to invest in football yes and expect also to run a loss because uh, um, when, you win when some, you lose some. You lose some, you win some. But what you invest is, uh, is the structures. I think the professional structures is what's only lacking around Africa. Okay. Look at the Premier League in, in, in the UK. It's, it's, it's a flaw. Why How they do that? It's a flaw, it's a flaw because there's people putting money into it. Right. And um, they support one another. The structures are the main things. Mm. It's the main um, is the focal point because without structures you can't you can't expect to go uh, a shortcut into big time that won't happen you won't achieve you might achieve on a very uh, minimal basis and on a short-term basis but uh, uh, for the future you have to invest long term now that was very touching relating it to my own personal experience before big brother yes i was catholic i'll go to church on sundays and pray but I can't say I had a relationship with God. But after Big Brother, I had to find God. The tabloids were nasty. People were nasty. Some family left me, so I had to find God. Now, thinking about what I just spoke to Peter about, is it human nature that we always seek God, we punt for God when there is a tragedy? Tell me what you think. Until next time, take care of each other and take care of yourself. Next on Makosi Today, can musicians be faithful? Musicians, yes, they can. To music. Not to women. So do you have a son? I do, yes. What would you teach them about safe sex, marriage? Safe sex and marriage. And I can't talk about Big Brother and not talk about Manetta. Did you fancy her? Who doesn't?